if you don't mind identifying who you are and your organisation. Thanks. I just want to say, uh, Jalian, I would have liked you to finish though saying that the nut industry has a cracking future. I reckon that would have been a good addition rather than Rosie. Uh, but my question to Tanya is that, Tanya, there's been a Senate inquiry set up to look at the issues with the Senate, uh, citrus industry. Um, have you basically just given us a, a pretty comprehensive snapshot of all the issues and opportunities and challenges facing the industry that you will probably uh, see presented there? And if that's the case, then uh, what would you like to see the outcome of that Senate inquiry? Totally everything I've spoken about will be the focus of um, Citrus Australia's submission. So the, the biggest outcome that we can get is for government to progress our market access issues, you know, in terms of um, you know, the trade agreements that we have with you know, different countries and also to, um, we really need the, the federal government to come on board to help some of the southern regions um, to work through the fruit fly issues now that all of our state governments are pulling the pin on us. Uh, Gary Fitt, Syro Biosecurity Flagship. A question for Jolyon. Uh, you ended your presentation. I enjoyed all three as well. Some fantastic uh, material there. You ended with a few issues for tree nuts, and one of them that uh, I know you're aware of is in terms of sustaining pollination services for some of those industries, particularly almonds and the threat of varroa. And uh, you'd be aware that there's, we've been trying to get some coordinated activity, some preemptive response to Varroa happening, but uh, very slow progress. I just wondered if you comment on that. Welcome to horticulture, Gary. Um, <laughs> nothing happens quickly. Um, it is a big issue, uh, less so for macadamias, but across the nut industry, it is definitely a, a, a big issue, as it is for a number of other horticultural products. Um, yeah, w what, what can I say? Um, you know, it's, it's getting that level of coordination, getting people to focus on... Um, there are so many of those big challenges for horticulture and how we prioritise one over another is, is very difficult. Um, yeah, I wish, I wish I had a better answer for you, but I don't. Any other questions? Sorry, we have uh, one, two down the front here. Richard Dickman, uh, Richard Dickman Bayer, jo Jolene, uh, uh, I noted that um, y you know you, you talked about the um, uh, involvement in China uh, in, in terms of technology transfer and so on. It's sort of unusual, I think, for some industries to, to think that you know we're supporting a potential competitor. But uh, do you think that has ha had a a advantages in terms of access to the market, knowledge of the market, uh, that, those types of things? Absolutely. I mean, it's important to put it in context, um, you know, for macadamias anyway, we're 1% of the world trade in tree nuts. So the potential for growth is immense and China has to be part of that. It's in our interests to build uh, a global production so that we can better engage with value adders like Hershey, Cadbury, Kellogg's, these sorts of people want to see long lines of consistent product. So, um, and we'll back ourselves to be in front of them any day of the week, you know, no matter how much of our technology we export over there, we will back ourselves to be in front of them. But definitely, I mean, you know, speaking to uh, the chair of the China Tree Nut Industry Association the other day, they're looking to us to work on our government to, to, uh, to get reduced tariffs for Australian nuts into China. They want Australian nuts in the Chinese market. And, and so I think our connections there, our joint ventures, our processing facilities, our preparedness to share information with them um, is reciprocated and they're prepared to work with us to see tariffs reduced. Uh, it just comes back to the frustrating nature of these trade negotiations and you know, the lack of urgency uh, I think our government feels over these things. Thank you. I might take one final question here, Jim. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Tanya and Jolene. Jolene, you mentioned that we need a well-resourced and uh, well-supported peak industry body for horticulture. Um, would you like to expand on that? In fact, Tanya, would you like to add to perhaps uh, how we go forward on that? I'm just going to remind our, our panellists before they uh, respond that lunch has started outside, so you've got three sentences each. Um, 
please. Thank you. Jolene, do you want to go first? Thanks. I was going to flick to you, Tanya. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> oh, look, um, we've just got to keep tipping away at it, Kim. I mean, it's, it's, it's a difficult job. I mean, NFF didn't get there overnight. Um, and, you know, uh, you know the, the red meat industry, dairy industry, they've all had their troubles in terms of keeping, building and, and keeping, you know, cohesive peak industry bodies. So, um, you know, it's not, it's not something that's unique to horticulture, um, but we are perhaps more diverse and I think many of our constituent members, you know, industries like custard apples, likelies, ones that you'd be aware of, in, you, you know, they, they don't have paid employees, they operate entirely on voluntary uh, labour. So it's very difficult when, you know, when you've got someone the size of Ausved um, and then you've got someone the size of Lightly's and how do you sort of build that into a cohesive unit? It's difficult, but we just, we've just got to keep at it. There's no other alternative. Steal the microphone now. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more and, you know, even out of um, the Minister's office, he is telling us that he wants to see a much stronger national peak body representing in a voice for horticulture. So it is something that, um, and that the larger industries within horticulture have been discussing and progressing. And um, I look forward to perhaps in six to eight weeks in being able to give you a clear, defined way forward. Thank you. Well, I'd like to thank our panellists very much and thank you as an audience um, for uh, listening so diligently. Um, happy for anybody who has any specific questions, if you'd like to come down to the front of the room, our panellists are happy to stay for a little bit longer. But in the meantime, also uh, happy to advise that lunch is available in the main room. Thank you very much.